Hello. Yeah, hi all. Um, I've just put together a presentation about my own learnings in the startup journey. More than pitching a startup, I thought I will share my learnings. It uh, could be a quite abstract. Yeah, if you have questions, you can ask me later. I will, I will, because of the short period, I will walk through it very fast. Um, so um, the, the, the topic is uh, building ecosystem innovations. What is the ecosystem? Ecosystem is the larger country, the community, the world, right? Uh, so building ecosystem uh, innovation at uh, population scale. Um, so and uh, I will also give a broad summary. This is going to touch upon you know, tech and scale. Scale in the sense of scale at the level of science. So uh, look at how many atoms are there in the universe. What is that kind of scale compared to businesses? So that kind of scale, right? Thinking about it, being inspired by that kind of scale. And uh, also being inspired by uh, beauty, beauty arts and uh, design uh, in our practical startup world is towards arts, right? A bit of touch upon that. Uh, and the third learning, third learning, our recent learning is people and empathy. Um, and that is where maybe we will talk about Namayatri. I will first talk about Jaspe. Uh, we, are a, we are a company I think most of you might have used us, maybe you might have seen. Uh, Jaspe would be reading the OTP and making your second factor experience better. And you would be using UPI. We have been one of the teams who have been uh, being uh, uh, ecosystem innovator in early days of UPI, uh, helping in a lot of building the initial building blocks. Uh, I'll talk about why did we get there? Why should maybe all of us uh, strive for ecosystem innovation? Um, so th this is, um, you know, where is the world going? You, everybody talks about AI right now, right? Uh, everybody talks about, um, you know, um, is, is computers going to take over the world? All these kind of things. Uh, I will tell my perspective and my learning, maybe what I found 10 years ago. Uh, why, uh, why technology is so big and important. Um, so there is a very, very big trend, exponential trend in the universe, not just the world, in the universe. Uh, it's the trend of increase in complexity. So complexity can be looked as uh, a plant is more complex than a rock, an animal is more complex than a plant, and humans are probably the most complex beings, right? So you kind of understand what is complexity. Complexity is the amount of intricate nature of putting things together. Uh, maybe putting things together of matter, you can call it, or maybe something below matter is there. But why do molecules get formed from atoms, right? So there is a spontaneous order which gets created. Um, and this is getting into technology. And this um, exponential trend, what is next to humans, um, the kind of increase in complexity that you, you would know about Moore's law, right? So Moore's law is all part of this bigger exponential trend which is behind the scenes which is going on. Um, even if you take, uh, where is Moore's law even coming from, even in engineering? Um, how much time did it take for architecture to evolve? Architecture took maybe a few thousands of years. Mechanical engineering took maybe a few hundreds of years. Electrical maybe much shorter. And this is 100 years ago, somebody thought there is going to be something called ethereal. And that turns out to be software. And that's an exponential trend. And that is the, um, everybody talks about these S curves that you know, right? And this is all part of these bigger trends. And an interesting part about these trends is there is something called spontaneous order which happens. And that happens, this is what is called creativity, creativity of the universe. And this creativity is not limited to human beings. The creativity is in the fabric of nature, it is in mathematics. So even, even something as simple, of, simple as, um, you know, what is the next digit of pi? If the universe is calculating pi at the fastest way it could, it doesn't know what is the next digit of pi. It is a surprise for itself. So it, it, this, this used to intrigue me like for 10 years and it is like, you know, I used to call it like value from nothing. Like, you don't need any money, you don't need, if you are in the path of creativity, it just happens. You don't need any material, uh, it just the next pattern is going to arise, right? You, maybe you're in your brain or in a bunch of brains or you plus your company, everything put together, right? So how do you tune yourself so th to this kind of spontaneous order, right? So this, is, this has been a big inspiration to us and this is where I think the scale and the beauty combines. Uh, you, some of you might have heard about this thing called fractals. So you can go and search for something called Mandelbrot set. And it is a one-line equation. 
if you run it, it creates beautiful patterns which are unpredictable. So this is against the typical side of science and predictability. The next moment could be totally something which universe has never seen. And that is in fabric of mathematics. I'm not talking like a, you know, some magic guy talking about all these things. Um, yeah, so why, now let's get a little bit practical. Why is software, why is this kind of creativity getting into software, right? Um, why is this exponential Moore's law happening? Uh, there is a very interesting presentation by Feynman in 1959. There is plenty of room at the bottom. You can search in YouTube, it's there. He talks about nanotechnology. He talks about why all these processors, all these things are going to happen in the future, which we are, this, this is why we are all here. This is why startups exist. So, atoms are so small. We, we deal with processors which are at atomic scale. Atoms are so small that a single glass of water has as many atoms as number of glasses needed to fill all the oceans put together. So, in a single glass of water, you have all the oceans put together. See, in the architecture world, you had to be a king to build the pyramids. Now you just need a laptop and you can be a king. That is why entrepreneurs exist, right? So in the, inside a processor, you are building cities and countries. So it, all software is actually physical at the small, small scale, right? And beautiful code is nothing but building all these things within at, at micro scale. Um, so that, that is why, that is why this, is, this is not yet done. This is still going on. Uh, though Moore's law people question uh, the, the speed of the processor, it has got an atomic scale, but the, it, is, it is pretty much we have gone 1D. The second dimension, third dimension, uh, like the second D is GPUs. GPU has happened, people are talking about, you know, uh, organizing matter at the 3D scale. Uh, as people talk about, you know, a single laptop, the amount of material in a single laptop is enough to have more intelligence if you organize it right, than all brains put together in the world. Um, okay, talking a little bit about Jaspe. So being inspired by uh, such things, uh, so we always naturally we went for, you know, what are the things that we should do at population scale? And uh, you can definitely see something like UPI working at population scale right now, right? You have to build things which uh, the whole ecosystem has to come together where capitalism, government, um, you know, communities, uh, everybody has to come together and build, right? Uh, so we, this is, this is from our uh, Series B deck, I just pulled it while <laughs> some few minutes back right now. So we thought we would be at uh, 50 million transactions in 2024. Right now in 2023, we are at uh, 65 million, tra 60 million transactions, 60 to 65 million. Sometimes it even, some days it goes to near 100 million. Uh, so it's all thanks to UPI, right? Um, so, um, a bit about um, our principles, um, well, this could take a bit of time. Um, okay, so I'll talk about what is value creation. See, this increase in complexity, beautifully done, is what I think we feel as value. Like AI is happening, right? If AI is going in a non-natural way, if it is not beautiful, right? It is, it is, that is the, that is a risk. That is the alignment problem, right? So, uh, that, that is why this fourth point is software and design. I talked about, bit about software, the exponential growth, but design is as deep as this exponential uh, growth in software. All of you know exponential, how big it is, right? That much importance, how Apple gave importance to design we have to do. Um, and that is why, to our capacity, we have been learning design. We, we are all techie people, but we have been trying to learn design. And in our evolution, uh, you have been users of our products. Uh, the first product I think you would recognize, we have been part of you know, building some of the designs in UPI initially. I think all of you probably every day would be seeing these screens. The third, recently we have built Namayatri. Uh, I'll come to that, why did we build it? That is also, many people like the design. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, so, um, mm, I'm jumping a bit towards empathy. Um, so, the, we talked about technology and design, that is a beauty, right? Uh, the third learning um, we have got is even to find, you know, where is the right place to put the technology and where is the beauty? Because we could be quite biased in our conditioning of beauty, right? Uh, that is where my experience of or understanding of empathy came in. Empathy is your ability to include, your ability to extend your circle, uh, circle of empathy it's called, 
to see a lot more perspectives because you have to have uh, like the word empathy I heard from very one interesting talk uh, the philosophers who coined the word empathy uh, one of their talk was about how does it to feel how does it feel to be a leaf in a tree right so empathy is not limited to human beings actually empathy in, in my understanding it is actually understanding even in physics, if you have to understand electromagnetic radiation, which we find it very difficult to understand, what is it really? You, you kind of get lost. The great scientists actually get lost and become that itself. And that's why they are able to invent things which are totally out of our reach, it looks like, right? Empathy plays a major role, even in understanding, even in, that is why in tech and design, empathy is really important. And, but all of us understand empathy as, you know, uh, seeing the other people's perspective. And uh, if you see the other people's perspective, when tech and automation is happening so much in one side, there is definitely, uh, there are a lot of people who don't have access to it, right? Uh, people like us, the work that we do is helping millions of people, but there are other people whose work is maybe helping only one person. Take an auto driver, it's one is to one for them, but it is like one is to millions for us. Uh, but if you really deeply think about it, that one is to million is happening from a lot of one is to one which is helping us, right? So all of you are helped by uh, people who are gardening the parks around you, people who are maintaining your city, the, all the service providers around you have to be taken care of, right? And you need to build the systems looking forward to that. Um, with this realization, why don't we build the tech and the design to help us um, include the people, right? And this is not just what I am saying. It is not just a small thing like, you know, a small uh, argument that I am making. Um, you can see the whole world is, this is a big trend. This is, there is another, uh, a book called, um, you know, Reinventing Organizations. I think it's, uh, it comes from another theory called Spiral Dynamics and all of that. It talks about, you know, exponential change in culture how from tribals to, uh, you know, small kings to empires to capitalism to community to what next. Uh, the what next, uh, so, so in all of these there are pros and cons. So the community culture has open source, it also has okism. And everything has its pros and cons, right? Uh, capitalism has uh, great innovation, but it has environmental damage and uh, marginalization. Um, you know, you you know how good government is. Government is definitely, if governments were not there, you can't create big systems, but you can know what are the problems with bureaucracy, right? See, so all of these have uh, its own issues, but the next stage actually can in can learn from all of this and include and integrate everything. We see that some of the ecosystem innovations in India are able to integrate compared to even some of the models of the West where uh, capitalism and uh, uh, the other side community, like the, the fight between the blockchain world and the capitalism. So they are just, it's polarized and they are fighting, right? Comparatively, uh, India has had solutions like UPI which are uh, working and much more needs to be done, but it's showing some promise and a way uh, towards a more integrated uh, culture uh, with capitalism, community, uh, government, everything put together. Um, so um, with such learnings now, we thought we should build technology which is, you know, super uh, cheap and scalable uh, and design which is usable and uh, empathetic to the service providers, right? So it is not just uh, empathy of a company like us giving to the service providers. Our problem was how to make customers empathetic to drivers and how to make drivers empathetic to customers, which is still unsolved, <laughs> which we are trying to find out. What is the, what is the formula for that? Uh, and that is our journey with Namaya 3. So far, um, um, it is an open system and, you know, internet and all of that is open system. I'll skip this slide a bit. Um, well, there is a video here. It's not playing. That's fine. Um, so, um, I, I think a lot of users, a lot of you are users of Namaya 3 and uh, you would know that uh, how happy a lot of drivers are. And they want more. We are also figuring out how to give more. Where do, where do we unlock from nothing the innovations? And I feel like we need to unlock from you folks only, the users only. If you folks, if you folks are empathetic to the drivers, it is they are going to provide good service, right? And how, how can we make that happen? And I look forward to your support as Bangaloreans in that. Um, and... Yeah, and we have done a lot of, you know, participatory development practices which uh, are known, um, get drivers to help us in building the product, understand their perspective. A lot of our people are driving autos to understand 
uh, what is it to be a driver, uh, all of that. And uh, uh, next is uh, we are also uh, figuring out women auto drivers, many are interested in driving. They say, um, so far, I, I, we believe with the EV ecosystem, there is going to be a change in the way autos work. And uh, that is going to enable more women drivers because there are a lot of demand for women drivers by customers. Uh, and uh, we are figuring out the ecosystem around it, how to, um, um, how to make it like a good working environment for them. Um, and also we are working with a lot of, uh, some of the NGOs to, um, you know, disabled people, how can auto drivers understand how to help them out. And we also think like that will unlock empathy in the auto drivers. That is also, if we, that program is, maybe it could look small, but it will help everybody else. So we are trying to find out, because the, the, some of the NGOs whom we are working with, they are super passionate people. They are like inspiring people. They have done it, uh, they have been in the empathy mode for, you know, uh, maybe two, three decades than us. And we are learning from them and how to get them into the system. Right? Um, yeah. Um, and you know the growth of Namayatri. We are uh, almost, sometimes we touched 1 lakh trips per day. Um, and it's still growing. Some of the next set of innovations, if we do, uh, we feel, um, uh, yeah, some more growth will happen. But Bangalore has only that many people, unless people st stop using their personal transport. And then I have another idea. We need to also build a new kind of vehicle. If somebody is interested in, you know, building EV vehicles, if somebody is into that, uh, we can do an open source design for a share auto. And uh, I, I think in between auto and uh, bus, we need a intermediate size vehicle, uh, which is open like an auto. Um, this is a design problem. Uh, but it is needed because one driver has to have earnings from multiple customers and customers have to pay less. Uh, that, that needs to be done. And uh, we are a software company, we don't know how to do it. So we are looking forward to support from any of you folks. Okay. Uh, thank you.